Thank you, Susan. That song is always so perfect. It just is. And yes, Susan is right. Here we are in February, the love month, and we're going to get to hear a whole lot about love. A few friends and I were at a uh, seminar yesterday given by an absolutely wonderful woman who ended up talking a whole lot about love. And as we were going through the worksheets that she had prepared for us, we came to one talking about the presence, living in the presence of love. And I thought, isn't that my title? So although I'm probably going to share with you some different, well, I definitely am going to share some different steps that we heard about, that I heard about yesterday, it's definitely some very meaningful steps that we can work with for practicing the presence of love in our life. And you know, it's easy to talk about love. It's real easy to talk about love. But it's not always, it seems, real easy to be loving. Anybody ever have any problem with that? <laughs> well, just turn up your love light. You know, well, excuse me, but where is my love light? Is it here? Is it here? Turn up your love light. And so, so oftentimes, we find ourselves in a position where, gosh, can somebody just give me some steps to work with or a pattern to follow? I'm willing to be loving. But sometimes I just don't know how to be as loving as I know I probably can be. So hopefully through some of these steps today, you will feel much more empowered to be the, dare I say it, the lover you are. Yeah, it, it's really something that we need to do and I know this is one block that we talk about often and you, you almost have to talk about it when you talk about learning to be loving or living in the presence of love. Living in the presence of love, to me, just right off the top of my head, means that I'm living in a space where I'm more centered than not. I'm more aware of the idea, if you will, of a peaceful, loving God and all of the wonderful activity of God moving in and through me. It's when I choose to stay focused on a remembrance that there is a higher part of me. There is a higher part of me. In unity, we love to tell each other the truth about who we are. It's easy to look at every one of you and say, I know you are a beloved child of God in whom he is well pleased. It's living in the presence of love when we look at each other and can really say, because we are so aware of who and whose we are, that we really truly can say, I behold the Christ in you. And realize it is so much more than words. Because we have learned by now that this Christ within, this I am presence, this um, piece of divinity that we are lives within each and every one of us. And so when we say words like, I behold the Christ in you, we are calling forth an awareness of that divinity in someone who may be going through a very hard time, a very difficult time, and totally forgets that they have been so empowered. So before I just get off into where I often go off to, I'm going to tell you the, first, the steps first, and then I will try to stay on purpose and speak to each step. So I was inspired by an article that I read, and you may recognize the name. I quite honestly did not, but I certainly like what she had to say an article that was written by Mark, a woman by the name of Margaret Paul. She is a PhD, and she had contributed to an article, Four Ways to Practice the Presence of Love. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna read this. This sounds that, you know, this sounds like it might be really interesting. And as I went through it, of course it was very interesting. Is it anything that we didn't really already hear or know about? No. I mean, y'all have been coming here for quite some time, and I sort of know what I talk about. And, you know, if you pay any attention, 
or your heart is like open to anything that goes on here, this loving little bunch, you know these steps. You know these steps. So the first one is being in the present moment is one of the most meaningful things we can do for our world and for ourselves. It is definitely one of the things that we really must do if we choose to practice the presence of love. Why is it so important to stay in the present moment? Well, I know each one of you could probably come up with numerous answers. One of the reasons I think it is so important to stay in the present moment, and I know Eckhart Tolle and Wayne Dyer and people that are much more famous than me have talked about that, but what I think is so important is in staying centered in the present moment is because what happens when we are totally here now in this moment, we are less aware of the scary things, and there are scary things going on in the world. We are less aware of the scary things going on outside of us. We are able to be more focused. We somehow allow ourselves to move into a state where we actually take responsibility for our own thoughts. What a novel concept. I know you've probably all heard, especially if you've been around Unity for a while, and we, I think we even have a song about it, our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Ah, think about that one. Is what's going on in the busyness of your mind, perhaps the fearful times that things are going on in your mind, do you want that to be your prayer? Maybe, maybe not. If it's something that you find yourself through your own thought processes creating a situation in your life that you, it's really less than ideal, you're the only one who can change it. And so I think that the way that we can most effectively change that is to bring ourselves back to the present moment. And in this present moment, once again, remind ourselves of who and whose we are. So we're gonna kind of just talk a little about these and then sort of sum it up. But um, bringing ourselves back to the present moment is empowering. It is empowering. Because we can get to be in charge of what is going on in this present moment in our minds. Now, if you're just going to say, oh, well, there's nothing good in the present moment, well, duh, you've got some prayer work to do or some other work to do. Because remember, as true students, our task, and it really is a simple task, sometimes we seem to make it very difficult, our task is to look for the good in every situation. Remember that? Yeah, look for the good. It's easy to find the bad so most of the time, particularly if we stay caught up in the outer. So once again, we're going to want to bring ourselves back to this present moment. We're going to want to remind ourselves of who and whose we are. And I'm going to share a little of uh, what she had, what uh, the woman who contributed to this article. Practicing the presence of love means being present in this very moment with the energy of the universe, the energy of love. Now, Particularly in recent years, we've, we've all heard a lot about and are learning a lot about energy and how everything is energy. We've been hearing for eons that love is always here, always constant. It's, it's never really gone away. We may have gone away in our thinking processes, but it's just that constant. So a lot to align ourselves with love as an energy, is one of the most empowering things we can do for ourselves because energy is absolutely everywhere present all the time. We're like a fish swimming in the ocean who might say, oh my goodness, I'm thirsty. Well, <laughs> you know, it, it really, it's, it's about the same thing. We are immersed in that energy of love. 
but it is our responsibility to remember that and then to live like we know that that's true. So the second step we've got here is praying throughout the day, praying throughout the day. Now, as I just said a few minutes ago, our thoughts are things and we are always praying. Well, we want to monitor our thoughts and we want to be sure that we are praying for the things that we really want to manifest more of in our life. For today's talk about love, we want to move into that space. We want to speak words in our prayer that assist us, if you will, in remembering the truth about self. Now, in this particular article, she had said it could be a very simple prayer. It could be a mantra. It could be just thank you, God, for this moment. It's not like we have to get in a quiet place and memorize some long prayer that may or may not have worked for us in the past. No, I think one of the best prayers we can have, and we can do it numerous times a day, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I mean, here we are awake. We're able to breathe. If we just make that gentle shift in consciousness, we are totally aware of the activity of God moving in and through us. So that's the kind of prayer, the kind of thing that we want to be aware of. And we can do that numerous times a day. This wonderful uh, workshop that I was at the other day, I'm going to share this technique because I know they would want this technique to be out with as many people as possible. And you know, a lot of us like to talk a lot more about meditating, because we in unity, we know that prayer and meditation are kind of the same thing. Actually, meditation is listening to God, praying is speaking to God. But this whole idea of meditation is very, very important to our life. It's an important thing to do, and in here we can do, do this meditating, this prayer throughout the day, and the method, and you can find it on YouTube, it's just incredible, and it's for those, especially for those of us who talk more about meditating than actually taking time meditating. And it's a wonderful program, a little process. It's called SIP, S-I-P, which means sit in peace. SIP of the divine. And what Susan shares with us in this, and it's just like a 10 minute presentation. She gets us centered, she gets us in the spot of being open and receptive, of being centered in, a, in truth. And then she even sets a timer for you. So you don't have to worry about when the three minutes is up. And then leads you ever so gently into this process of simply sitting in peace and taking three minutes for meditation. Now I dare say there is not a one of us that couldn't take three minutes to meditate. It's something we can do numerous times a day. It creates space for an awareness of divine ideas and a whole lot of other things. So sip of the divine. It, it's a wonderful process. And if you don't even want to listen to the whole 10 minutes, you can kind of fast forward a little bit and just start with the three minutes. She offers a challenge at the end of the thing. Um, no, we all know this already, but it takes 21 days to form a new habit. 21 days, that's all. So she said, so try it for three weeks and see the difference that it makes at the end of that time. And it is really, quite amazing. If you, you really decide to do that, to incorporate this sip of the divine into your prayer life, you will see a very big change because you are simply taking the time to remember who you are. So be in the present moment, pray throughout the day, and get on with what you're saying here, Nancy. And the other one, the other, there's two more, through vigilance. When we decide to become vigilant about our thoughts, 
and not allow our wounded self, and we all have a wounded self, folks. We all have a wounded self. And do not allow our wounded self, our ego mind. And what does ego stand for? E-G-O, I bet Diane knows. Edging God out, that's right, that's right. <coughs> so that ego of ours is just constantly, oh, that didn't never work before, why are you gonna try that again? It, it's in there trying to mess us up. So once again, she's saying our ego mind is there to chatter away, figuring things out and scaring us with untrue thoughts. We can start to focus on what is beautiful and true. But we are the only ones who can do that work. To do the prayer time, to take the time to remember, to pull ourselves consciously back into the present moment. It's our, if, it, if it is our intention to live in the presence of love, we need to be willing to do these things. These are very simple steps. We can do it so easily. The last one that she talks about is inner presence. Pra practicing the presence of love also means staying present to our own feelings and inner experience. If you're anything like me, you can get up and maybe take some quiet time in the morning, and then you get on with your day and you're doing so many different things and they're really, you don't give much thought to your spiritual life. You don't even give much thought to what it is you're thinking. Because oftentimes you're so busy, you're going in so many directions, but you're being invited to go within, to sense that inner presence. And I love this analogy, this story that she shares with it. If we have a baby that we love, we stay tuned into that baby 24-7, attending to the baby's needs as soon as it lets us know with a cry or in some other way that there is a need. If we leave the baby in a room sleeping, chances are at this day and time we're gonna have a baby monitor so that we know if the baby wakes up and is crying so that we can get in there and see what's going on. So just as we would set a baby monitor for a baby that we needed to be aware of, the suggestion is set a monitor for ourselves. Set a timer. You know, the Catholics have a wonderful process that I don't really fully understand or know all about, but they did do a, a novena. Any ex-Catholics here? Yeah, yeah, you know novenas, and it usually runs over 90 days, uh, I'm sorry, nine days, nine days. Unity Minister Hypatia Hasbrook in her book, Handbook of Positive Prayer, came up with what she called a unity novena, and we could do it in nine hours. Well, <laughs> nine hours as opposed to nine days? Well, I'll be willing to do it for that long. But what the novena can simply be is a monitor to remind us to monitor our own thoughts. A monitor to help us to remember to return to be here in this present moment. A monitor to remind us to Speak loving words of prayer. A monitor to help us to remember that we want to do this work, and so we will stay true to this work. It's not a difficult task, y'all. This is the beginning of the month. If we would just practice these four little steps for no longer than February, I guarantee you that at the end of the month, you would sense a transformation. That's all I have to say. I love you all.